Hey folks, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to show you how to bind one of these. This is a micro, this is a, this was a Mobula 6, it's in a Meteor 65 frame, but whatever. Anyways, it's a SPI based receiver board. Doesn't matter what it's in, as long as it's one of the SPI boards. Two, one of these, one of your FR Sky access enabled radios using the external module. This is a XJT Lite. I'll do another video on how to do it with one of the other multi-protocol modules. But for today, we're just gonna talk about the XJT light. So first things first, we have to make sure we have uh, a few of the prerequisites done on the radio. We need to make sure we have the firmware and the bootloader updated to the right versions. So basically, there's a lot of versions that might work, but we're just gonna go with whatever the newest version is. I'm gonna show you what I have on this radio and you can follow along. So you're gonna hold the menu button down, hit page until you come over to page seven of seven. We wanna make sure we have version 2.3.11 OTX. Get this from opentx.org using the OpenTX companion. I'll put a link to the video on how to do that over, um, oh, over there, here, over there. Yeah, click that video, then come back to this one. All right, once we have that on there, we want to make sure we have the right bootloader version. So we're gonna turn the radio off, hold the true trim switches in. If this is a um, an X light, you're gonna hold down all four of the directional controls on the, uh, the little game pad looking thing, hold them down and just tap the power button. Don't hold it, just tap it. We wanna make sure it says 2.3.11 or whatever version of OpenTX you have. At this point in time, it's, it's 2.3.11. So we're gonna make sure we're using that one. Go ahead and power the radio back off and turn it back on. And we're gonna wanna take our, our XJT light module And go ahead and stick it in the back of the radio. And as you see, when you plug it in, the LED on there may not light up. And there's a reason for that. If external RF is not enabled, it will not actually power the external module. So we're gonna wanna go down and let's just make a new model because there are some issues with reusing the original model that came on these radios. There are a few bugs in there that can get carried over from copying and reusing them. And I've especially noticed it on the external module. So we're going to create a new model. Do not copy it, just make a new one. You know, create model. And we like quads, so we're gonna do multi. That's multi-rotor, and I'm just gonna hit page and just page through all these. You can change them to whatever you want, but for now, we're just gonna leave it like that. All right. So now hit page the first time, and now we're in our setup. You can name your model if you want, I really don't care. And we're gonna see that internal and external RF are turned off. I'm gonna go to external RF, and we're going to start scrolling through until we find XJT Lite, not XJT. This is for the full size XJT module, not the one we got here. So we're just going to keep on going. And it's actually the last one on the list. So XJT Lite. And it's going to fault to D16. We want D8 because D8 on these SPI boards works way better than the uh, D16 protocol does. I don't know why, it just does. Just go with it. All right, so that's set up. Now, if we flip the radio over, we should see that our external module is blinking. So we've got the red light solid and the green light flashing. That is a good sign. Next thing we wanna do is see what version firmware is on that external module. With OpenTX 2.3.10, this was not a possibility, but it is now with version 2.3.11. So again, we're gonna hold that menu button and try this trick, hold down the page button. Look at that, we go backwards. And we can come over to here. So we're now at page seven to seven, scroll down to merge, scroll down to modules and RX version, click the wheel and we have, this is the hardware version and that's the firmware version. So 1.1.0 FCC. Very important that you do not flash version 2. Point whatever to this module. If you do this, you're not going to be able to use this for any of the older D16 uh, receivers. You're not gonna be able to use this for the older D16 receivers. So make sure we leave it on this. If it says 2.0 and you want the old firmware, it's not on FR Sky's website, head over to my Discord, tweetfv.com, click the Discord link and head over there and under the software section, I have uh, several different types of software for this radio, one to change the region, and another one is the version 1.1.0 firmware for the external module. All right, now that we have that on there, and we know that we're right, just 
exit out of that. We're going to hit uh, menu, page, and we're going to scroll down to bind. Don't hit it yet. We'll just sit there. We'll let it sit for a second. Now you're going to need to take your quad and we're going to plug it into Betaflight. All right, now that we're on Betaflight, we want to come over to the ports tab. Make sure we don't have any serial RX selected. This is If this is a SPI board, there should be none of these selected. This may not be true in the future, but for the vast majority of the boards I've dealt with, this will be deselected. Go to configuration and scroll down to receiver mode. And we want to make sure we have SPI RX support enabled. We're going to come down here and we're going to select FR Sky D. FR Sky D is for D8, FR Sky X is for D16, and then there's also FR Sky X LBT. If you have a region locked radio, like most of the access radios are, and you're in an EU region, then you're going to want to use uh, LBT if you're trying to buy it in D16, but that's not part of this video. So we're going to use FR Sky D. Make sure you hit save and reboot. All right, now go over to the CLI, type bind underscore RX, and hit enter. You should see right here, binding. Go over to your radio and select bind. Go back to your CLI, type save, and hit enter. And go ahead and exit this on your radio. Go to your receiver tab and go ahead and wiggle down sticks. There you go. And that's it. It's pretty simple to bind to the external XJT light module if you have one. Same goes for the external multi-protocol modules. They're a little different. And there's a little, there's some different features in that that you might need to mess with. But for the most part, this is the easiest way to get a micro that uses D8 mode up and flying. Just make sure you check with your, um, your local communication spectrum type thing. You know, make sure D8 is legal where you're at. No, it's not, you know. Not my problem. All right, folks, thanks for watching this. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, concerns, uh, put them in the video description, but the best place to get a hold of me and all the other knowledgeable people that are around me, go to tweetfv.com. After you click all those affiliate links and join my Patreon, hit that Discord button and join my Discord server if you really, if you wanna get in the nitty gritty and try to work through this stuff if you're having any issues. All right, folks, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Happy whipping.